One, two, three. Well, I'm a big Chicago blues fan, and, and uh, I cut my teeth as a harmonica player and a guitar player on Muddy Waters and Helen Wolf Records and Little Walter and all Slady Boy Williamson and Elmore James and all those wonderful people. And most of the guys that played guitars in those bands couldn't afford Gibsons and Fenders. And a lot of those records were made with Supros or, or Ks or Harmonies or Dan Electros, which were all readily available for very fair amounts of money. And it had a very good sound. And so, really, if you're the star of the band, maybe you had a Gibson. And like if you were Muddy Waters and it was your band, you might have a Gibson or a Fender. But usually the other guys in the band probably didn't, although by the time the 60s rolled around and people were making a little more money, more and more of them started playing Gibsons and Fenders as well, as they started to make more money for their time and their playing. But initially, they made almost all their recordings on harmonies and Ks and, and, and guitars that were uh, more in their price range. As they, they made very little money for their gigs, you know. We don't realize how much the dollars dropped in value, but, uh, you know, the whole band might get paid 40 bucks for the night, okay? That, but that dollar, that's like 400 to maybe $600 today as, as far as what the dollars dropped in value. Like in 1959, you could buy a Les Paul Flame Top, uh, Les Paul Standard, for $269.95. That's what it sold for. But, you know, that gives you an idea. Today, if they make a guitar like that, it's a $6,000 guitar. So they make a replica of a 1959 you know, or 60 less ball player.